What's up, anals? And by anals, of course, we mean Asian, not Asian listeners. Welcome back to the podcast. This is Asian, not Asian podcast where two Asian guys not from Asia talk about American issues no Americans care about. I am your host, Fumi Abe. And I'm Mike Nguyen. We're coming at you live from Brooklyn, New York. And if you're listening to this on your phones right now, please take a screenshot, post it on Instagram stories, tag us at Asian, not Asian pod, and we'll regram it. We love it when you do that. And also check out our Patreon if you want bonus content. And one thing we do on the Patreon is if you donate, we always give a shout out to our newest members um, on the latest episode. So this week, um, first, we got to give a shout out to our $50 a month uh, contributor, Producer, Ryan right? Coggs. Producer, once again, if you donate 50 bucks a month, you become a producer. So thank you, Ryan. Um, <laughs> tell us what you do for a living because I don't know how. This is some big dick energy. Big dick podcast energy right here. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, uh, then the three, the three newest members are, this person didn't give a last name, but she, her name is Trish, T-R-I-S-H, which is typically an Irish name. Is it? But huh. we don't, I feel like okay. Trish, Trisha, maybe. Trish. We Trish. got an Irish person. Top then we got uh, this you. person. Yeah. Top of the mo- that's not is that Irish or is that British? They're they're close. They used to that's be true. one until well, we the original careful, Briggs that happened. Hey, yeah. oh, well, hey. what's that? What's that? What's that terrorist group? I, is it called IRA? I, Irish Republican Army. Hey, hey well, you can't yeah, call yeah, them terrorists. Yeah. Maybe oh, they were terrorists. Oh. Hey, oh shit! I can't say that. Oh, am I gonna, are they gonna shoot me? Yeah, they don't. Those guys don't cancel. They just straight up bomb or whatever. Yeah, they so just bomb fine. you, dude. So yeah. Top uh, of the morning got, to you. <laughs> <laughs> top of the morning to you, terrorist association. Um, then we got uh, Gabrielle Ferrer H. Sorry, F E R R E R. That okay. is Spanish, but we know that when it sounds Spanish, they are in fact Filipino. Oh, so Filipino interesting. Person. I feel this is, Filipino. but this is like almost like Argentinian. Like I want to say this person is like South American, really. You know? Okay. Which country though? You got you to pick one. I'm gonna say Argentine. Why not? You're you're an Argentinian Asian. Thank you so much Shouts. for your money. And lastly, we have Cameron Sun Becker. Was this a dude who was who was in who was at the hang last night? That was another guy. I don't I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, Sun S U N. That sounds kind of Korean. I, don't, I had a Korean friend named Sun. That once. could be yeah. That could be a Korean. That's a Korean name. This is Becker. this is like half half Korean, half white person. Cameron, sounds you're half. So God, hot. we're so good at this game. My yeah, God, we're so we're good so at good. this game. This guy has a six pack for sure. So, for sure. And thanks for uh, giving us that money. Thank you. Thank you for your money. And again, if you want us to guess your ethnicity by your last name, a very problematic game, please go to patreon.com slash Asian, not Asian pod uh, and give us your money and we'll do that. This week's theme, what I want to discuss uh, is, is starting from the bottom. Now we're here. Asian. This is a little <laughs> thing I want to talk about up top. Okay. Recently I was watching, I recently got into this anime. I, I know I talk about anime a lot on here. I recently got into this anime called My Hero Academia. Okay. It's yeah. a very popular anime. If you're it like, I don't awesome. know what the fuck you're talking about. You're a fucking loser. Okay. It's so popular right now. <laughs> and the, 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 I'm not just bringing it up because I like it. I, I feel that it's very relevant to my life right now. Okay. Basically the, the, pre, the premise of the show is that it's, it's a parallel universe. It's like earth in the future where like 90% of the people on the planet are born with like mutations, kind of like X-Men. Like yep. they, they can like, you know, the pyrokinetics or they can like control water or whatever it is. Um, but it gets a little crazy. Like some people have like um, exhaust pipes in their, uh, uh, in their um, thighs so they can like run faster and shit. Like oh, it gets cool. a little while. Yeah. It's crazy. And so, and, and because of that, um, becoming a superhero is ac- an actual profession. You can go to school and they have like different offices. Like you can apply to be a superhero and work for different companies. Yeah, so this yeah, is like yeah. a world where there's like villains and you, you can you can get paid to be a professional hero. And the main character, his name is Deku. And all he wants since he was a kid is to be a superhero. But when he's like seven, he finds out from his doctor that he is part of the 10% of the population who in the in the in the anime they call corkless like he doesn't have a cork he has no, yeah, he has yeah, no mutation yeah. and so therefore he can never be by definition he can never be a superhero this thing right. he wanted to be his entire life gotcha and then it, the story is about him ultimately becoming a superhero despite the fact he has no superpower yes and some, you know what, bro? I'm going to get a little emo right now. I feel that way in comedy sometimes, you know? I feel that way in comedy, you know? That I you feel have, like I... you have no powers or talents? I have, <laughs> I, I, I have no star power. Like, I have zero star power, and all my friends are, like, you know, blasting energy balls from their fists and fucking, you know, doing <laughs> flying and levitating and turning yeah. into dragons, you know? And I'm just, like, a straight Asian guy with... I'm a, I'm a corkless comedian. I'm up yeah. there. Your thing, and your, I, your power, I would say, if anything, is making spreadsheets. That's really your thing. Yes! You have so I know, many spreadsheets. <laughs> Too many. But I don't know why. 
I, I used to Dude. think that you were like you were really organized, and then I uh, I was like, man, Fumi's so organized. I gotta be as organized as him. And then I would go, now I go into our Dropbox folder, and there are so many folders in there, just a mess <laughs> of folders. You're just like you're you're like you know what? I don't know. I can't think of a joke right now. So I'm gonna make another folder for that. Bam. Yeah. And I'm just like, I, there's so many folders. That's your that's your yeah. jam. I get it. <laughs> Dude, when I'm when I'm not feeling creative, I make folders in Dropbox. That's kind of you what just I do. nest the shit like crazy. Your organization, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I like and this. The, I like and, this. And, and the reason why I bring it up is because uh, this is the first time I'm talking about it on the podcast, which I think I'm allowed to talk about. But uh, I I recently oh, yeah. got a job. I got a, a a real comedy writing job uh, with James Corden, and uh, which is like you know a pretty big deal for me. For me personally, just because like when I first started, I never imagined I so, could get a gig yeah. like this. You so know? and and to be and, clear, you are a writer on the show. That's what we mean. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm not like a janitor. No, 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 no. Because because you could be because you could be a writer for James Corden, and you're just like I'm just doing one of his side things. You know, you're a yeah, writer yeah, 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 on yeah. what's the the name? Is it the Late Late Show? Yeah, late, late show. I'm writing his monologue jokes, and there's there's a bunch of us. And then I'm also like coming up with game ideas that he can play with guests and stuff. Fire, fire. And then congrats, man. Any other congrats. Thank you. But like, e- even um, you know, so like I'm like with these professional writers now, and even when I'm when even when I have the job and I'm like in the fucking room, I still feel quirkless you know because the thing with deku he eventually gets into a school where they train professional heroes yeah and he still feels because like he comes into some sort of power by this weird thing that happens which i don't want to spoil for anybody but he gets into the school for superheroes the best one and he still he still feels like he doesn't belong there you know what i mean yeah and uh i feel like i i don't know i just i just I just relate really hard to this 15 year old fake Japanese boy, I guess I feel, is, is the point. I definitely I'm feel, uh, this is just like a cool way of doing, first of all, I love you, you, uh, for animes, you, you had me at academia. Okay. You know how much I love, you know how much I love school. I'm thinking about getting a master's degree in history. I love school. So as soon as you said academia, I was like, yes, I'm in. I'm okay? in schools. I'm in school. Is there an answer? Yes, I'm in. So I love that. Uh, and I love the idea that because what this is, this what this has done is this is kind of just like anime eyes the whole like, um, what's it called? Um, you know, imposter syndrome, right? The yes, ultimate yes. imposter syndrome where you literally don't have any superpowers, and now you're yeah. now you feel like that because you're in this uh, uh, this room or the writing room or whatever. So yeah, I think it's yeah. cool. That sounds awesome. Yeah. So yeah, but I'm uh, trying to like I I think one thing I'm trying to do. And I think I don't know, I don't know if I'm doing this because I'm older, but like I think if I yeah. got this like five years ago in my twenties, I would have like obviously still have imposter syndrome, but I wouldn't really like tell people about it or I'd be kind of humble about it because I'd be like, oh, like they can fire me literally at any moment. But now I'm just like, I understand they could fire me at any moment, but I feel like there's just so much shit in pursuing entertainment that like you really have to like celebrate your little wins. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, so this like, is a big win. Yeah. I mean, and this, this is a big win, and big and, and even if my and, and even if I get because my contract is only thirteen weeks, even if I get fired in thirteen weeks, it's still a big win. You got you it. You know, in terms you, of they can't take that right? away. They, um, yeah. I, you know, though, is that this is I've been I've, I realize now that the reason why you don't understand a lot of my references is because I keep referencing things like you might learn in college, like Marx, and I really should be referencing <laughs> things that you that are related to anime. So, yes. um, you know, so really, I think of you. I get what you're saying with My Hero Academia here, but I also think you're you're really like One Punch Man because mm, okay. because Cause you uh, I've got hair though. Here's the thing, yeah, you do have hair. I I look like One Punch Man, but you are like One Punch Man because <laughs> you did you did the thing where you're like I'm going to do a thousand what is it? He does like a thousand push-ups a day and a yeah, thousand yeah. squats and runs or whatever. And because you you did the thing you, you were telling me before and we're about to talk about this is that like the other people aren't stand-up comics and stand-up comedy in my mind is like the mma of comedy it's like the most brutal <laughs> it's like the, it's a like 1000 push-ups a day 1000 squats running 10 yeah. miles you know you're not just you're not you're yeah. not going to ucb and doing ha 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 improv we're all going to make it no 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 stand-up is like is horrible and, and messy and you yeah. did that for however long and so that's why now you're there so you're like one punch man you know 
I'm mixing my metaphors. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. See? <laughs> <laughs> that you know what's crazy? I bet somebody that, that that's like some like I bet someone said that at like some nerd couple's wedding, you know, like the best man speech. <laughs> You're like one punch man. You're like one punch man. And people and are everyone's like, just, oh. everyone's crying. <laughs> yeah. For sure this has happened. Yeah. Um but anyways, I wanted to talk about this with our guest today because I know he's a huge fan. Um of this anime, but also a very funny stand-up comedian, and he's he's literally somebody I met when I like first started. We like came up together, so you know, and and I, I and I saw him when I was coming up. I saw him as somebody with a quirk. You know, he was the guy who was like exploding shit on stage. Even when he's bombing, he's still exploding shit. You know, and he's like he's like oh, Alex. I'm like Alex. The show is over. He's still blowing shit up he's on stage. He's still blowing stuff up. He can't stop. He's still blowing. He can't help it. <laughs> So uh, this dude coming up, so funny, a, a dear friend of mine. Um, you can see his comedy on um, all, all Deaf Comedy, which is on HBO or HBO Max if you have it. And he's got this amazing album, comedy album called Finally Defined, available on Spotify. For, also, so check he, it out. He uh, he also looks like One Punch Man. So hey, we got he that. He also looks like One too. Punch Man, 100%. <laughs> so guys, give it up for uh, Alex, a.k.a. Saitama Babbitt, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, guys, uh, I can't lie to you. I think that was the greatest introduction I have yeah. ever gotten. But like, I just I enjoyed everything leading up to it. That was fucking great. What's up? How you doing? What's up, man? Thanks for Dude. coming on the show, buddy. No problem. I, I've actually genuinely been a big fan of this uh, podcast for a very long time, so I'm very happy to be a part of it. I know you. Uh, when we when our producer reached out to you, she was like, "Hey, could you do the show?" And you responded, "About fucking time." Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is. I, I I like very few people genuinely, and I like you guys. So I would watch y'all post your podcast and be like, you know what? Don't ask. Just wait. Just, <laughs> just wait. wait. Just wait. I think y'all would do real cool shit, and like I'd buy fucking. I'd buy ramen. I would buy Asian shit and just post it sometimes. <laughs> hoping, hoping Fumi saw it and was like, you know what? He's earned it. Like, yeah. <laughs> you keep posting Bro. about anime. Like, hey, you know, just put it out there. You know, just this yeah. is it. Tagging us <laughs> slyly in the a comments. Bamboo yeah. steamer just to try to get on this podcast. <laughs> Damn, steamer. Alex. Alex, we wanted to pass our little story of the week on to you. You know, yeah. do you relate to that character in My Hero Academia and sort of the thing I just talked about? About yes, you know, feeling you've seen, quirkless you've seen sometimes it, or whatever. You've seen a lot of it. Yeah. So uh, that uh, if if you do visual, I believe you guys we do. do right? Yeah, so, we do YouTube. Yeah. yeah so the people looking behind me, I have three pieces right behind me. Three. That's it's Bakugo. Called, yeah. So that's Bakugo, but it's um 3D lenticular art. So if you were actually oh. in here. Or if That's I cool. moved my camera, it it turns into it turns into Deku and um, Bakugo, Deku and Todoroki, uh, the fire and ice guy. Oh, the fire guy, yeah, 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 yeah and yeah. just like that. Right now, it looks like Vegeta, but it turns into Vegeta, Goku, and Goku Black. Um, oh, so yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of anime, big fan of the show. Uh, yeah, it was interesting hearing what you said about about you feeling like Deku, like kind of quirkless. Because uh, I relate to Deku in a different way. It, it's not. It's not that I feel quirkless. I just feel like I work. I'm working harder than I want to work, but I'm only working hard because I'm around so many dope people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, I get yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you know? that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I'm yeah. I, like I watch you guys. I watch different comedians. So I'm I'm big fans of, and I'm just like, all right. I got to earn my keep because I'm in this school full of fucking dope ass superheroes. I oh, can't shit. be the only one <laughs> not doing shit. I refuse. Like, and that's kind of what drives me or where I relate. And then, to, you know, sometimes in my down moments, I'm just like, God damn it. All these guys are naturally cooler. Oh, wow. I feel mm. that way a lot, a lot more than people would think. I think everybody around me is way cooler and I work very hard to accomplish it. And I'd be like, Jesus Christ, is it working? Is I don't know, but <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure Fumi will tell you. But when I, we see you at shows, I'm like, shit, I got to bring all of my shit now in order to, you know, what I'm saying, because I see you, you're using your 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 energy beam to blowing up uh, roofs and stuff like that. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay, uh, you know, and I'm like, I'm just doing body weight squats, like a lot of body weight squats. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm hoping that I can bring my thing to you, you know, because yeah. I, I think that's the thing about stand up is that like when you go, when you do stand up or you do, you do a lot of projects, oops, uh, is um you only see the end result, you know, you only see I'm going to go up there and I'm going to kill for 10 minutes or whatever or 15 minutes. You didn't see all the shit I had to do, the sweating and all the 
the doubt and all this other shit you had to do. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it looks like I had, you know, people have a lot of talent, but then it's just like I've just, I was just doing the push-ups, you know? Yeah, you know, and I, I, I get that. I get that, man, because in the same way you think of my energy beams, like, oh, yeah, this guy's just f fun loving. Dude, I have bombed my way into, in the, like, town. Like, <laughs> into the energy beams. You bombed your way yeah. into the energy beams. Yeah, I had to explode alone first. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It wasn't just, it didn't just come out perfectly. Like, I was just sweating and blew up by mistake, and I was like, all right, well, try not to kill your family this time. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, 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 Learn the lessons. Oh, my man. God. Well, Alex, we're so glad you're here. I, I wanted to talk about this first because if you're watching the YouTube video, by the way, we have a YouTube channel, so check it out. Just Google or YouTube Asian, not Asian podcast. We're on there. Uh, you have a lot of, you know, anime and cartoon posters in your room. You're a big fan. Um, I feel like you've always been, I, 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 since, since I've known you, and we've talked about this in person before, but like, you're like a little bit younger than me. Actually, you're, 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 how, you're like quite younger than me, right? Like five years, um, maybe? Uh, yeah, I'm 26. Okay, so you're no like, shit, yeah, five, really? six years wow. than me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you, dude, you fucking started stand up when you were like 16 or something like that, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. I, cause I, when I met you, I remember you were like 20 or 21 or something like that. But mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, like, because when I was in high school, anime, but I also went to like a white high school and like, anime was <laughs> not, it was not cool. And I wanted to ask you, like, was anime always cool? Because you grew up in Brooklyn and yeah. New York. And I'm like, because New York is always 10 years ahead of Ohio, you know? <laughs> and so, like, I'm just wondering, like, W could you show this to your friends when you were in high school or did you get into anime recently or uh, like I had to get like a girl first like I had to get you gotta make sure you get oh. pussy before you go full nerd <laughs> yes, like, you yes. if you go full nerd before you can get girls it doesn't work it's not a good like oh, I can shit. you know what I mean yes. it's, it's not as appealing I can still be cool in places and it's like ah you know what I kind of like anime guys you know what I mean like I, <laughs> yeah. I weave it into it like yeah I, I, love, I love the idea that like you're out there you're like spitting game on someone and you're but in the back of your mind you're like man dude I hope I get late so I can talk about Dragon Ball yeah <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm gonna get this pussy so I can talk about anime, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's all just for that, yo. You just want to be comfortable. So when I was in school, like for sure, you know, uh, you know, I, I don't want to speak on all of the black culture, but for sure, like the people I was around and like my older brothers, I had hood older brothers and different people who. Everybody loves Dragon Ball Z. Like, that's yeah. a staple. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys would consider Pokemon an anime, because yeah. it's like yeah. loosely yeah. is. Right. Um. So, yeah, but Pokemon is a big thing. I used to watch, like, me and my best friends growing up, we used to love Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, dude, yeah. Blue, blue, blue Eyes White Dragon? You blue had Eyes me. White Dragon. Blue Eyes Dragon. In the projects trying to summon... <laughs> trying to <laughs> summon... <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh! summon... Nothing funnier than uh, two Puerto Rican kids and a black kid with a dual disc in the Yo! project staircase throwing cards on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> what was the other one? Like uh, like something Black Magician or something like uh, that? Oh, uh, it, was, it was a Blue Eyes White Dragon and the Dark Magician and Dark Red Magician. Eyes Black Dragon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See if I yeah, see. Yeah. I don't know any of these things. It sounds like you guys are selling drugs. Okay. If that's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> blue eyed white dragon. Let and the black get an magician. For the blue eyes white. Give me some <laughs> of that. Give me some of that black dragon, man. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I almost wish you guys were talking about drugs. Are you talking about Yu-Gi-Oh? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Damn. But, dude, that's that's so true about, like, how you got to be cool before you show your nerdy side. Because it's funny because a, a lot of times, and I think a lot of, like, I talk about this with Mike all the time. But, you know, I, I live in Crown Heights, and I see a lot of, like, cool-looking dudes, like, wearing Jordan and, like, a, like a Naruto headband or whatever. <laughs> but, but, you know, like, you know, pe people like Megan the Stallion will, like, drop, like, lyrics about, like, Sasuke and Naruto yeah. in her rap. But it's, like... Pe People already thought she was cool, so it's extra cool right. that she is confident enough to show off that she watches Naruto, yes. but if she didn't rap and was just working at Wendy's and was just talking about Sasuke, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You'd be like, what? get the fuck out of here, you know? So weird. That's... What's wrong with her? <laughs> yeah. How did you... It, how did you <laughs> yeah, go ahead, no. What, what were you about to say? I wanted to know a little bit more about how you got, got into it, and then, because I think with Dragon Ball, that was like something you could see in a lot of, uh, uh, like on cable and stuff like that. But then how did you start getting more into the culture, you know? So for sure it was uh, my go-to's was Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon when I was a kid. Uh, and I'm a big Power Ranger fan. It'll, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll feed into it. 
I found out from being a Power Ranger fan about like Super Sentai, which is just like what the Japanese version of the exact same show. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. So like I found out about that. And then, you know, from talking to I have two older brothers from talking to them, they're really in anime. You know, wow. what I mean, so yeah, like extremely. So they started telling me, especially um, over the last like maybe five years, they would just start telling me about more animes that shit like Baku, uh, not Baku, go uh Baki, um, Baki, One Punch Man, all of these. Baki's other... fucking gnarly, dude. So yeah. much blood. That, that one's about. Well, I think Mike knows the one. That one's about um, martial arts. Oh yeah. yes, that's right. I've heard yeah. about this. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's old yeah. school. Old school. That's yeah. Cool. So Baki, uh, what else? Attack on Titans. Like all of these shows. My older brothers would just tell me. Uh, my older brother and his wife. They'd be like, "You need to get on that anime." So I just kind of got into it from that. And then, as of recently, within the last year. Uh, me and my lady started watching this together and that became like she started watching Attack on Titan and like watching it, watching it, leaving me out of it. I'm missing an episode. She's like, well, you missed a good one. <laughs> you know what I mean? So a lot of it is Yo. based off just the people I, I care about around me also reinforcing just, you know, being into what you're into. Right. Do you think because, you know, whenever I read about it's so interesting because I started watching anime in Japan. But then when you bring that product over to, to America, because America, there's a lot, you know, there's different communities and ethnicities and stuff like that. It gets interpreted like a little bit differently. Like uh, the, the the element of race always comes into play. And like, that's not something Japanese people really think about. But like, yeah. I, I remember hearing about like, you know, like we had uh, somebody on like a year ago who was like, oh yeah, Piccolo is black. And I'm like, I don't what? Like, is yeah. that really? She was, I swear to God, her exact quote was Piccolo is black. He got a big dick. That's what she said. And I was like, <laughs> She said she said that she portrays the guardian of the earth. He got a big dick is what, yeah, what she said. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. It's the mannerisms. So as Americans, because, um, you know, race is such a prevalent thing within our culture. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Especially for black people. We look for the black characters because oh, okay, yeah. we're not always okay. re- represented. Right. You know what I mean? Especially so back like, then. Right, yeah. Yeah. So we're like, who's close enough? Who's close <laughs> enough? Yes. Yes. To kind of like, if you like, this person got swag. That's the black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The- <laughs> You're looking yeah. like I need a person of color. Green is a color. I'll take that. Okay, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's Namekian. <laughs> yeah, Namekian. But like when you look at his demeanor, he kind of mm. has like an aloof swag to him. He had the um, the what is the ro- It looked like a circle scarf around yeah. his neck. Like yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah, was yeah, cool. Yeah. He took care of a kid that wasn't his out of being a supportive oh. father. Like. <laughs> Yeah, if can't. you look at Piccolo, <laughs> it looked like a Tyler Perry movie. Like it's a it's a whole Tyler it's a wholesome Perry movie. movie. It's Tyler, Tyler Perry is Tyler Piccolo. Movie. Tyler Perry presents yeah. Piccolo. <laughs> Yo, that's Tyler so Perry funny. He's got funny. Piccolo. Good dad. That's the whole- <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Tyler, I mean I, 100% Tyler Perry has the money to buy the Dragon Ball property and make yeah. all of the Dragon Balls but just with black characters just I tell think that would Piccolo's be yeah. story yeah man so we look for that you know it, it, growing up there wasn't that many so Piccolo was like a black character because we didn't want to claim uh, what's the dude Mr. Popo from uh, Dragon Ball Z mm, yeah right. he is clearly black like visually black but like yeah. wow racist in design for us like, we didn't want to claim him <laughs> Right, right. Are there any other I, I, yeah. black characters from anime that we didn't think of as being uh, black characters? Well, one, one, yeah. Brock from Pokemon for sure is black. For oh, sure. shit. Really? Why? Because he's yeah. got like dark... Because he's got well, darker he's, skin? He's darker skin. Uh, he oh, he was like... Cool. He had, once again, that cool factor was in there. He had like seven brothers and sisters. <laughs> like if you were just... <laughs> If you were just going stereotypes, Brock is clearly and whenever Brock would like get girls, he would like squint his eyes like that. Like he would do this, he would be looking at the camera. <laughs> Nurse Joy, I love you. You're so beautiful. He was like, if he wasn't black, he was definitely Puerto Rican. Like, Yay! <laughs> oh my god! He's doing this. <laughs> hey, Ma was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah just like. Boy. And then Misty, his white girlfriend, was like, "Stop it! You like you flirting with everybody." Ah, like that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I love it. I, That's I, so I, we need. Funny. I need. A, I need a podcast like this. Find the find the black characters. Find, <laughs> find the black dude. Guy. That's that's a podcast, bro. <laughs> 
<laughs> Who's black this episode? Who's, Who's black this black episode? Guy? Dude, we gotta we gotta do that pod. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> Who is black this episode? Damn, yeah, I love man. that. Oh my god. Yeah, but my we just god. we just try to find ways to you know ultimately it doesn't always have to be like visually, but you right. just want to relate to a character to somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody somebody told me I think it was a comedian named Josh Homer. I, I but, but when I first started, he, Josh Homer is a, is a black comedian. And when I first started, like around 2014, 2015, I, I do some jokes about Asian representation. But back then, like, this is before Crazy Rich Asians and, like, Bo and Yang was on SNL. So, like, a lot of people, like, didn't really understand what I was talking about. And I remember Josh Homer was like, yeah, like, what you're complaining, what you're joking about is, like, what black people joked about 20 years ago. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like, like, in, it could, but it's like, it just happens in that order because black yeah. people were here first and they fought about, they fought for it first and all that stuff. Right. And mm-hmm. it's like, but even, you know, in, in the nineties and two thousands, yeah, sure. There were black people on TV, but a lot of it was like, you were a basketball player or you're a fucking thug. Yeah. You, know? you, you couldn't be a guardian of the earth. You couldn't you know? be the guardian yeah. of the earth. <laughs> you <laughs> you, they you guys have really they progressed you. a long way, you know, from basketball oh, player yeah. to guardian sure. of the earth. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. dude. Now, now we can, we don't have to be like, now we have enough representation. Cause I remember hearing Chris Rock talk about it. It. It's like the true sense of equality is when you get to suck equally. That's yes. real equality. Yeah. Yes. When you yeah. can have a black character that has no real point to the story. He's not a boyfriend that's really important. He's just like a guy. Right. But just playing a guy. He's not playing the black. Because that's you the know, black guy. As, right. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Because at the end of the day, I don't think anybody really always, always wants to represent for the culture. Like, of course. Yeah. I'm the black guy in this one movie that we have where I have to play the one. No, you just right. want to be able to be you. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if that is, you know, there's still a lot that the culture had, a lot of progression the culture still needs. But for sure, it's definitely better than it was in the past, for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recently, no, um... We were talking about K-pop too. Yeah, you, yeah. You were I like posted something uh, about um, these two like old school like uh, uh, K-pop guys, and they they have they they're like older dudes, and they were bigger in like two thousand five and 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 back then, and now they're kind of like coming back, and they, they did a thing together, and then you were like you like slid into my DMs, were like, what's this? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> you know? Yeah, bro. I fu- what, what's the names again? Do you remember? Um. Uh. Yeah. It's uh, um. Hold on here. Se- was it a seven? No, it's not rain. It's it's rain and it's um rain and yeah rain and it's, something. It's rain. It's rain and JYP. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah. It, the, the song is called "Switch to Me," and it's and that's that um. That whole thing is like that song is like pulls a lot from and you were talking about that because you were like, oh, this really pulls from a lot of like black entertainment and all the dancing and like the glove and the outfits and stuff like that. And you were like wondering about that. And there's a lot yeah. to unpack there. Right? We, I, I couldn't unpack it all in, in the DM conversation. <laughs> that's, that's how I got on the podcast. Hey! <laughs> yeah, because you were talking about it so much. And then I felt like I was your like, you know, it's so, it's like, I felt a lot of pressure because I was like, you're, I was, I was taking your K-pop virginity. Okay. <laughs> you were. And I was like, I got to do this slow. I got to do this slow, you know? So I was like, okay, well, Just you know, you can look in, you can look into BTS. You can look into like <laughs> Blackpink is really big. These are very, you know, accessible ones. And then you can get more and more into it. Uh, yeah. And there, of course, there's like a long history of it and all this stuff. But I thought it was cool that you were asking me all these questions about it. It, it, yeah, dude, it was because I watched it. It was like, oh, this is Asian Bobby Brown. Yes, Dope. exactly. I didn't know, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that because it, it's very interesting to me, especially as like I'm a straight up black American. So yes. I, I'm, lit- I'm learning I, every time where I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, from being around different, I also I'm a fan of music and musicians and stuff. Um, so I learned that our culture, like, because in America they can they tend to not tell you. Or at least make you feel like how important black culture is around the world. You oh, know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. They, they kind of Absolutely. make it seem like it's just this singular thing and, and it kind of belittle it in some ways. So I think you, it takes an extra step to realize how many people are genuinely influenced by the culture. Huge. You know what I mean? That's Absolutely. a great point. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, so uh, when I saw that. Yeah. It's, it's, I would say it's, uh, it's one of the great tricks of the white man that they packaged <laughs> up all of the, all of black culture, rap, 
jazz, all sorts of stuff, and they exported it and made tons of money. And yep. you know, it's all over the world. And that's like the the that's how they how America kind of stayed relevant for the last like 50, 40, 50 yeah, years. Yeah, but they make so. you think like you can only perform in East New York, Brooklyn somewhere. Uh, yes. Like that's the <laughs> yes. only place you're valued. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so that's you know that was so interesting to see because I saw a lot of Bobby Brown elements in the guy yes. we were talking about, uh, and I was like, oh, Bobby Brown was that's you know that's late eighties, early nineties yes. when he was like at the height of his stardom. And I now that I think about it, I remember watching a Bobby Brown video where he toured Japan, if I'm not mistaken. Like he did a I full fucking tour for sure. And I so it's like you keep in mind these people have grown up they had kids they had kids who wanted to be artists and this that mm-hmm. and the third so that's like a major part of the culture there too that was i was just impressed by it. like oh shit this is dope look at him well, he took his shirt off in the rain that's <laughs> <crazy. Yeah. laughs> oh. well people forget too is like k-pop i mean we it's called k-pop but i mean all k-pop groups at least a lot of them in the 90s when they were starting to like become a thing in the 2000s and even now always has uh, hip hop elements, R and B elements. Every every you know group was uh, for a long time was oh, would always say, have at least one rapper. And always have mm-hmm. at least one rapper. Not, not uh. more than that, but always one. Um, <laughs> and he wasn't always a great rapper, but there was always one guy who was rapping, <laughs> <laughs> and that was his thing. And so a hundred percent, all that stuff just came you know came from uh, from black culture, man. So yeah. you know what I'm saying. So uh, I'm I'm glad you you got anime out of it. I don't know if that's a good exchange, but like you know. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> yeah, it, you know what? I think it's not a fair exchange, but it sure is good enough. It's, it's, it's better than it's better than the white man has given us. Uh, <laughs> oh man, but this makes sense because like, like uh, you told me once that you know obviously you've been doing stand-up for a while but for a long time you you wanted to like be an r&b singer that was your yeah. thing you yeah. love r&b and you really? i remember like one of the Are things you, we talked about is like because yeah. you watch like r&b concert dvds and yeah. you told me once about like the seduction thing yeah so like arm at R, if you go to r&b concert there's always a part in the concert where like there's a seduction part where the singer will like bring an audience member on stage and like dance on her or whatever it is that's like a very specific r&b concert kind of yeah. thing and i remember <laughs> yeah, we kind of like talked about that and, and i didn't realize you like wanted to be an R&B Yo. singer before a comedian. That's like that's like a hilarious. Were you a big yeah. Were you a big singer? Ambition. You're are you a big uh, singer? So you here's what I yeah. I went I went to I was in chorus. I sung baritone for a while, which is just deep ass voice. That's all that is. Um. So within that, I've like, but I was I always admired musicians. Like I'm yeah. a comedian by all by all stances. But in terms of the people who I like looked at as artists, who I was like, oh, I mm. want to be like that. It was always musicians. Big fan. I talk about it on like every other podcast is I'm a big Usher fan. I grew up yeah. watching like Janet Jack because I think I showed Fumi a Janet Jackson video of her seducing a dude chained to like I, a chair. I was I, I, I went on uh, I went to a Janet Jackson concert in, way when I was in college and then she did the yeah. whole thing. And she did that. The it was chain? awesome. Yeah, the, the like whole thing. Spin a dude around, got she, gets a, she gets an audience <laughs> member and like gets him up on there. And I, it's crazy. Yeah, and that shit just always looked so fucking like it just looked like the full experience of a show. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So early on, like some of my first uh, gigs in general were hosting music events. Like you know, really? so a lot of my fans of music. Yeah, so a lot of my friends are musicians. My first hosting gig ever was hosting a music event. Um, to where I would just do everything I saw R and B singers do. So I remember I was hosting and I took my shirt off. Took my shirt off. And <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> How, how Alex, you're go? skinny as hell. You're skinny Dude, as hell, bro. Bro, <laughs> you can't fucking tell me in my head. <laughs> like, I basically, if you look at anything I do, I do everything R&B singers do but sing. I do everything <laughs> else. <laughs> I'm dancing. I'm dancing in the rain, taking my shirt off. I don't yeah. give a fuck that I'm skinny. It doesn't. Yeah. I don't because I've seen enough uh, varieties of artists to realize you actually don't have to have anything you don't need no, you abs, don't. really right. no because like bobby brown didn't have abs back in the day like he was he was a very skinny he just he went hard he just yeah. com- committed to it like commit like in stand-up when they say commit to the bit arm yeah. some r&b singing if you don't got abs you just gotta go hard with the go. act out you gotta yeah. do a really good act out. yeah <laughs> so that's just what i would do so i would be i'd be hosting there'd be no reason for me to take my shirt off but like you know what guys like <laughs> <laughs> 
There's no reason. I'm, I'm trying to. No. Uh, I'm trying to imagine you doing a comedy show, and you yeah. bring up a, a one audience member to do jokes to. You know, just <laughs> chain that person, and then take your shirt off, yeah, and just like be this. like, oh, "Hey, man, you fuck you. What's going on, huh? You, yeah, what about airport? All right, airport food. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what? I grew up in Brooklyn. I don't know if y'all did. <laughs> <laughs> my oh my god. god but uh I, every time i hang out with you um we always get hennessy of course we always oh, get yeah. hennessy. and i have an interesting perspective with hennessy because mm-hmm. when i think of hennessy i think of you and mike because oh, hennessy yeah, uh, so because hennessy obviously is you know if we're going by stereotypes big thing yes. in, in black communities also a really big thing in vietnamese communities Hilarious. specifically yes. <laughs> and i just <laughs> we have so and much wanted, in common yeah <laughs> the po- the po- I just, let me tell you all the things we have in common okay the anime I, yeah. I'm not as into anime but I used to love anime uh, yeah. poetry write poetry god yeah. I didn't know it. I wish I wish I uh, was more into the creative thing I didn't think of that of being a creative person in high school um, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, but then Hennessy Hennessy is all it's all about the That's, Hennessy so dude if I put on my glasses we'll become two punch man we'll just fuse <laughs> together bro <laughs> yeah, um, it's, you know, yeah. I didn't. I didn't know about the uh, you know Vietnamese people like in Hennessy, which is we crazy. Because yeah. how I actually one of my favorite memories of Fumi when I first started drinking because I you know it's an old stand up bit I used to say I wasn't a fan of Hennessy because I thought that's on what the only thing black people could drink and then I found out about white wine. Uh. I <laughs> I loved it because when I met Fumi, like I knew it for a little while, but when I started drinking, uh, I would look at every comic and see what they would drink. Like, all right, this person, this person. Fumi, we were at Tribeca Comedy Club, man, and he was being so fucking cool and pulled up with a big glass of rosé swirling <laughs> it. Like, <laughs> that is extremely Fumi energy right there. Just rosé... You know, yeah, just ro- rose in a fucking blazer. I'm a, and I didn't know what rose was at the time. I didn't so know what it rose- sounds fancy. It like does sound like fancy. Like when you hear rose, you be like, oh, that's fucking fancy. He's like, I'm like, what you drinking, Fumi? Oh, rose. <laughs> 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 and for like a year, I bought rose because I thought that was like the money thing to buy. Like, because <laughs> of Fumi. <laughs> Oh my god, oh, that's funny. As I hell, remember dude. that. So you, I remember so you're, that, yeah, I, uh, you're a big head. Are you? Are you? No, are you not in Tennessee? Are you into white no, wine? No, so I'm, I'm. I'm genuinely more of a, a wine drinker. Like I mm. prefer wines. So Hennessy was just always. It was the liquor. Everybody around me drunk. Like all my all my friends it was like Hennessy and Bacardi. That was like my oh. aunties. That's what people drunk. That's yes. the liquor. I didn't know about the varieties of other shit. Like oh, dude, I don't have to drink yeah. toxic liquor. I'm good. Do do so Vietnamese people we like Hennessy. Um mm-hmm. we got it from colonialism and we got <laughs> it um so Wait, like a which, big like thing. the French or something? Yeah, who colonized Vietnam and bought Hennessy? Who the, the, fuck the French did that? the French for sure. We they like, brought we, Hennessy? French people how the, bought how Hennessy? The, how the fuck else would we get Hennessy? Do you think we got it from the Cambodians? Where, where do you think we Wait. got it? From? Where do you think we got Hennessy from? It's fucking French. It's a- Wait, so Pepe Le Pew pulled up with Hennessy? A hundred percent. We got it from the French. So anything that's French, we we, we you know we got the we got baguettes and we, that's why we eat cheese and we drink coffee and we have Hennessy mm. because of all the French shit. So um, <laughs> Vietnamese people, we got when what our our thing is. We'll have it at a at a at a wedding. This is a little bit less now in the modern, not modern, but like younger people. But Vietnamese people, uh, a lot. The the thing is to have it at a wedding, and everybody at the every table has one bottle. You get one of these and a sprite, and that's the <laughs> that is the Vietnamese move. The Vietnamese wedding is like that, and you take shots of it. You don't like sip it. You take you pour it and you do shots of Hennessy. At a Vietnamese wedding, y'all take shots of Hennessy and Sprite? You know what we need to do? I am going to take a new podcast. We're going to have a new podcast. It's called Alex Babbitt Goes to a Vietnamese Wedding. And we're going to, I'm going to take you. To. And then you're going to take me to, I don't know, I don't know what you guys do. do a black a, a R&B black show. Cookout, yes, cookout. there we go. <laughs> and I'll be walking oh my God. around. Yeah, <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Yo, Alex took me to a black cookout over the summer, and I made a huge yeah. mistake of bringing white claw. Yeah, and I made a full. <laughs> he did. That's, he a my, That's a hate crime. That's a hate crime. Up to my fucking birthday with white claw. Everybody whispered to. I was drinking. Everybody was like, "Who the fuck bought the white claw?" <laughs> <laughs> and he I kept w- leaning in. Was this okay? Was this- <laughs> 
I was gonna bring Rose. <laughs> Yo, Dude. that shit was so funny, man. Alex, what uh, what? Well, I don't want to make the same mistake. What should I bring if I if I come uh, if I get to go to one of these? To a cookout, man. You know what? In all honesty, if you just bring yourself, because it, mm. they, if if it's all black people, it's it's exciting. They like what the fuck? Wow, yeah. what's oh? So, you know what? Uh, do is is what? I don't want to fuck up the is it soju or sake. What which one am I thinking of? Uh, sake is a Japanese rice wine. Soju is yeah. is similar. It's very similar. It's also rice wine, but bring, it's Korean. Bring yeah. one of those. Yeah, bring one of those. Okay. Yeah, bring bring that because I fuck with them shits hard, but I don't know where to get them. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's like, hard to find. <laughs> it is hard yeah, to. It is. It's real. weird to find. Yeah, yeah. I get that. I feel that. Um. God, that is so funny. But I mean, you know, Fumi also brought himself, which is also white cloth. So that's you know. That's yeah, his, that's he, brought, he brought himself. And here's what: every time Fumi comes like to an event that I have or something, he always can also leave with girls. Like it's so crazy how many girls <laughs> like Fumi when it comes to my events. It blows my mind every time. He's got Yo, that Pokemon I'm just, I'm just, trainer uh, energy. Okay. Right, what the he <laughs> he's squinting his eyes. You know, he's like, he's like, Ugh. that's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, man. So we've been talking about it before, and it it's been tricky to talk about because it is not funny. Um, but uh, yeah, we've Everyone's there. There's funny. been a lot about a lot of talk about you know Asian hate crime, like it, it, hate crimes against Asian people. You know, according to some stats, it's gone up like whatever, a thousand percent, two thousand percent, something like that. And there was a really interesting um, article. It was by Jay Caspian Kang, who's a, who's a great writer, and it was in the New York Times. And uh, let me, I want to find the actual title of it. Hold on here. I want to make sure that we're referencing it. So sorry. Mm -hmm. Hold on here. I got to find it. <clears throat> um, here we go. So it's in New York Times. It was, uh, it was out, I think, this week. And it's an opinion piece. And it says, we need to put a name to this violence. And sort of like the subhead is the recent attacks on Asian Americans have unearthed the contradictions and questions beneath America's impoverished understanding of race. To solve the problem, we must first learn how to talk about it. And he has this really uh, good line in there um, because there's, you know, there's so many things that you see in the news, and it's like an, an uh, you know, an elderly Asian person being attacked, and a lot of times it's like a, a black person who is like sort of, is the one doing the perpetrating, and mm. um, he has this really good. A thing here where it says there are plenty of ways to describe discrimination at the hands of white people white supremacy microaggressions the bamboo ceiling orientalism what doesn't exist now uh is a language to discuss what happens when the attackers uh caught on video happen to be black and and he he, he kind of talks about um you know I, I think this is such an interesting idea because you need to have language in order to do something in order to like crystallize an idea so for example you know, Karen, right? That's shorthand now for when a, uh, a, a, a white woman, you know, abuses her privilege and, and, and is like oppressing someone. That's like a fast way to do it because then all of a sudden you can just say Karen and you get there right away. But there isn't yeah. a way to, to talk about the relationship between, I think, for Asian people uh, in the general milieu of racism, but then also mm. Asian and black. There's not a mm. lot of like, discussion about mm. that it, and and like, Jay mm. Kang, uh, Kang also talks about how this was something that happened with um the Rodney King riots in 1992 well you know there was mm -hmm. there was this thing and people didn't know how to talk about it and it's more complicated than Asian people and black people don't get along we have a lot in common mm -hmm. we got Hennessy okay we got yeah. anime <laughs> okay <laughs> but we don't have a way to yeah. talk about it and I've been I was trying to write a joke about it uh because we get so much of our shit we get so much language from pop culture Right. And uh, what we want is for things to be like rush hour. OK. Yeah. And right now, everything is a little bit more like Romeo must die. OK. And uh, we don't like that. So it's 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 okay. it's tricky. But I wanted to hear. Uh, I, I thank you for buttoning up your shirt and putting on glasses. Right? <laughs> Yo, that's how you know I'm a fan of R&B. I did a costume change in yeah. the middle of the podcast. I, act two. Yeah. I'm surprised. No, hold on here. I'm surprised you didn't just take your shirt off. You're always oh, going to talk about racism. I'm take my shirt no. off here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're gonna just take it off his shirt. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Th you know th these are. They, I, I want to use these my words carefully because 
this is kind and of we don't we don't situation. expect you yes. to and we didn't bring you on the show and we and, to, and, and we didn't and we don't, all black people alex no, no, no. and we don't we don't represent all asian people or anything no. like that i, I it's just that you know this thing is out there and i think there's a lot of discussions about it but people haven't really been talking about this specific thing head on yeah yeah and we just thought it might be interesting for comics to talk about it yeah no i i'm with trust me i i never am gonna represent all of anybody because i ain't shit man uh yep. <laughs> i don't, I I don't study you, enough saying. hearing this conflict you know uh, dang, it's touchy because you know, I think I th- I think we don't always have a way to communicate uh, beef between minorities in general. You yeah. know, because over overall, especially in American culture, we definitely do harbor wrong. White man's evil. White people suck. Blah 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 yep. blah 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 blah. But then there are some you know some awkward moments that happen, and I think in our culture we've often like the negative half of like uh, our Asian relationships if you will are like the racist Korean store owner who like watches you to keep you from stealing yep. and yep. the hardship is in some ways the person might have been stealing like that's right. the, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. the, 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 that's the difficult nuance of like crime yes. is some habits that people develop are justified like did something happened and that right. per, that particular person was like oh no we have to figure this out and there's a level of it that comes from you know the imagery too you know what i mean so yeah. i'm I'm not specifically talking about the woman who got beat up like that's horrible man like right. but that's like a shitty person yeah you know right. what i mean and i really want you know if, if i could genuinely and we'll joke and shit or whatever but if i could genuinely have it my way i want it to get beyond it always being an a asian beef when someone gets fucked up or a black beef when someone gets fucked up yes. It might have been for that reason, and hate crimes are goofy either way, because they they were fucking ridiculous. It's like when uh, what did Trump call coronavirus at first the uh, Kung flu? Like right. that's fucking yeah, stu- yeah. that's stupid. That's really dumb. And anybody who looks at an Asian person and they say, "You know who bought the fucking coronavirus here?" <laughs> like that's that's ridiculous. You know what I mean? But I don't I don't like that overall. You know, we I, like you said, we have a lot of common factors between us and. If you're a criminal, just you just be a criminal. Stop blaming <laughs> your your culture for you. you know just what be I mean? criminals. Yeah, just say I like beating people up. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Don't say I did it on behalf of the black community. I did it for my No, you like right. fucking people up. Right. Mm. Yeah, you're you're a piece of shit on your own, you know? That's Yeah, like, yeah. When, when have you ever like what point in your life is an old Asian woman making you so scared that yeah. you gotta beat this lady? What happened? What right. is? Yeah, that's <laughs> fucking and vice versa. An old per like really an old person. If if you beat up a person that's like sixty five and up, you like you gotta be horrible. Cause what <laughs> happened to get you to fucking do that? What yeah. what eighty five year old with a bad hit made you nervous? Like oh, gotta <laughs> kill them before they get me. That's fucking stupid. Yeah, you know man. what I mean. Yeah, I always think about that too. How it's always like o- older people getting attacked and meanwhile yeah. like all the um the asian male dorks like myself who've been training for years wanting to be attacked i'm like <laughs> come on man i'm a yeah. blue belt okay i'm a yeah. blue belt all right uh, Fucking bring it man over here he's, he's ready for anything <laughs> come on all right i'm one punch man yeah, you know right? you know wing chun you know what's good yeah exactly <laughs> okay come on that's, yeah. that's that's what's up i get it i get it fumi what are yeah. your thoughts yeah, I mean, I I I, I totally agree. I, I think, but you know, it, it's also important to remember, like, it the, the part that sucks is to Alex's point. Uh, even if that black guy was like, I did this because I'm an asshole and I'm a criminal in this country, and it goes both ways. It's not just with black people. This happens with Hispanic people and Asian people. Like, you can say that, but America won't allow you to. Um, detach yourself from your racial identity right so yeah. like yeah it's it always, always a race thing. it's always race and um you know it's like this is like the weird thing is a lot of white people in america are like why is it always about race well you fucking made it about race yeah. you you make you make it about race you know that guy like we don't wake up every morning and think like oh i'm so japanese today like i never think that no. but like we, we walk outside and then people do things that make you feel like you're less than or mm-hmm. you know make you mm-hmm. remind you that you're not white right or whatever yeah. and so that's what's hard about it is because yes I, I i i think you know you were saying earlier about chris rock right mm-hmm. true equality is when you can just suck 
and no one cares that you suck. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, right now, maybe in comedy, that's changing a little bit, but like in the real world, like with real violence and shit, it hasn't yeah. really changed. You know, that guy sucks, but it's because according to the media, he, he's black. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, and and I, and I think that's sort of the. It's not a very funny point, but that's it's, it's hard. I, I'm, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I, I don't have the answer. I don't no, have the answer. There, I don't know how. I mean, I don't, that's that sort of the thing. I think we've all been kind of struggling with it. You know, mm-hmm. whatever for all for years about this shit, and it's 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 hard to joke about because we don't even have the words for it. Right, we don't have the way to talk about it. You, you know, if you were writing a joke, you could easily write jokes about you know uh, about karens and you can write all these jokes about white people this and that because yeah you know it's almost like um you know fumi we used to think that it's hard to be an asian comedian because you have to explain to people first what it be it is it's like to be asian before you can get to the joke you have to kind of do some educating and i think too Mm -hmm. with this like the way that the different races interact with each other you know whether it's Asian and black and then also Latino and black and then you know Asians and whites and like there's so little conversation around it that it's hard mm. to make jokes because we don't even have the words first like the the, the regular words to do it mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and 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 we just have all these other things and that's why you know I think it's important just to talk about it and then to you know talk about all I mean this conversation we've had for the last hour yeah. is probably the most in depth as far as like how much goofiness we all have right together yeah. you know yeah. and, I, and i think yeah you know, hearing your point hearing your point bro it you know th- i think you got to get to the subtle nuances of you know most cultures it's yeah. and then, and then you can get past a lot of the bullshit most cultures just care about providing they have their whatever like countries feelings towards certain things are that you're trying to evolve past like it's all pretty much the same shit but a lot of people don't take the time or you come from you know a family who isn't like i guess liberal in their thinking you know what i mean so they don't they don't go to other cultures like i i grew up with a a dad like my uncle's white like three i put one of my uncles is white two of my aunts is white you know what i mean it's like whatever i don't look at them and say that's my white uncle it's just like no that's my uncle john he's yeah he's cool because i know him as a person you Mm -hmm. know what i mean i'm i don't care like yeah there's some things that are different because because his background but even so it's like whatever man you know that doesn't really matter so like i think more people just need to talk that's it i agree i agree i think needing to talk and and finding those those things like you said like that that commonality i think it's Mm going to be I think if, if we're out there in the streets, it's hard to beat up someone else if the, they know, if you know they're also into Naruto. It's hard to do that. Okay? <laughs> All right. You're having a Naruto battle. If you pulling up with <laughs> right, the right, right, right. Jutsus, yes. <laughs> then it's not- and then it's like right. training. You're just training. You're like, just training. Oh, that's yeah. different. That's not a hate crime. Okay, now you're just no. training. Okay, that's different. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> so our solution is everybody needs to wear Naruto bands. Everybody yeah. wears Naruto yeah. bands. And and make sure you wear the one that says ninja and not the different villages because that's going to create more yeah. more um, tension. We don't want that. Okay. Then uh, practice exactly. jujutsu. Exactly. It's like, oh, you're from the same village. I'm going to fuck you up. We're not yeah. doing that. <laughs> we're not. We're doing a united you ninja village, alliance. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> Hey Alex, this was this was so fun. Yes. Thank you so much for uh, yes. doing the podcast, man. No problem. Once again, thank y'all for having me. Um, I I genuinely was excited to do this one, so I appreciate you guys. Where, Where can our, can our yeah. fans uh, fans find you, and what are you up to? Like anything that you uh, uh, yes. know about? Uh, so hey, anal's all over the world. I just hey, like hey. saying that. That's real fun. Uh, <laughs> my name is Alex Babbitt. Once again, you can find me on all social media platforms from TikTok to Instagram, Facebook, all of that as Mr. Babbitt. That's M R dot B A B B I T T. When it comes to personal projects that I'm working on at the moment. I'm super excited about a music showcase that I I have uh, that is streaming via Zoom and at the moment, but it also streams on multiple different platforms. It's called Fresh Face Friday. On Fridays, we showcase different uh, musicians, singers, rappers, poets, whatever from around uh, the New York City area. And because we do it online, we can also get people from outside of the state to perform you know what i mean so it's just a great all-around show and i have my second studio comedy album which fumi you came to the recording for which will be coming out uh later this month um so i'm very excited but i know the title the title is called 
uh, ninety four twenty one as paying homage to a big uh, Usher album that I liked. Yeah. 8701. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was gonna say I was yeah. like, that's like an Usher thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. His was eighty seven oh one. Yeah. So ninety four twenty one is the year I was born. The year is coming out. Um. Yeah. So I'm just super excited about that project and Fresh Face Friday. You can follow that Instagram page and my own personal Instagram page. So yeah, I just I'd love to meet you guys. Oh my gosh, please, please check that out. That sounds absolutely incredible. Uh, uh, no promises of whether or not Alex will keep a shirt on, but uh, that's part of the fun. That's part of the fun. <laughs> it's off! It's off! It's off! <laughs> um, uh, okay. okay, well, as, so, yeah. as always, you can find us on all the social media platforms at Asian, not Asian Pod. I'm also on there at the Fumi Abe. That's T H E F U M I A B E. And you can find me on Instagram at Nice Pants Bro. Please check out our stand-up comedy show that we do on Zoom. And the next one will be uh, March third, ni- March nineteenth, and the one after that is April second, and the one after that is April sixteenth. Just go to asian.asianpod.com for free tickets. Uh, if you're an iTunes listener or Apple Podcast listener, please don't forget to leave a five-star review. Just do it on your phones; it's real quick. And join our Patreon for bonus content. That's Patreon.com/asian.asianpod. Um, I think that's it. Alice was super fun. Thank you guys so much. And uh, Anals, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Peace.